let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, you have gathered us all here this afternoon. It is under your purpose that we are here and it is at your providence that we are able to have this time spent together in understanding and reading your word so that our vessel would be empty with that holy oil. When the voice will be heard, the bridegroom is coming, we will rise up to meet the groom, but not to look for the oil. And so help us today as we study your word. In the book of Matthew chapter 25, the ten virgins relating to the book of Revelation chapter 17. Lord, we bring to you ourselves because there is nothing in us. We're only depending on your knowledge that you will be sharing with us, imparting to each one of us so that the portals of the heavens will be opened and we will receive the abundance of the oil that you have promised. Forgive us, Lord, from all our sins and help us to empty ourselves. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us go to our Bible, Matthew chapter 25. Let's have a look and read Matthew chapter 25. And let's glean some lessons on the story of these ten virgins. And also, let's look at the pen of inspiration. So I hope you have downloaded in your apps or whatever you had the book entitled Christ's Object Lessons Christ's Object Lessons the very last chapter the very last story of the Christ Object Lesson is chapter 29 which is the subject of our discussion today meet the bridegroom <clears throat> now Matthew chapter 25 in verse 6 and at midnight there was a cry behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him the ten virgins are on the same knowledge of the Bible okay? the ten virgins are on the same knowledge of the Bible the Ten virgins were all waiting for Jesus coming. The ten virgins has no uh, partiality to any of them. They are all on the same mission, on the same level of understanding. They are all waiting, meeting the bridegroom. Unfortunately, five becomes foolish and five becomes wise they made all their preparations they all made their declarations but the five has a very special things that they have done so now and the foolish in verse 7 then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps now, there was no foolish yet. There's no wise at this stage. They all arose. They both heard the loud cry. Both of them heard. One, they all rise up in verse 7 and trimmed and their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried. So the word tarried here is not somehow we translated it as delayed. But the word tarried here is what we call probationary time. A probationary time. A time allowed so that the work of Jesus will be first be fulfilled. So Jesus has two works in heaven. Jesus has two ministry that he has to do in heaven. Two works, two ministry. The first was his daily ministry. The second one was his yearly ministry. This you have to understand. 
the bridegroom is delayed, but let's look at what he is doing in heaven so that we'll understand what is this delayed. Number one, Jesus is doing his earthly, daily ministry, and then his high priestly, once in a year ministry. Two, two works that he is performing in heaven. So when was the time that Jesus do his daily ministry? So the daily ministry of the priests, the work of the priests in the sanctuary daily, every day, seven days a week, even on Sabbath, seven days, every day, even on Sabbath, the work of the priests is to ministry to the sinner their offerings. So a sinner, a person, or a member of the camp, anybody who lives in the camp, will go to the priest on a daily basis, morning or night. They can come to the priests. The priests are there 24 hours a day. That's the daily work. Every day, the, the, the person, a member of the children of Israel, or a person living in the camp, will go to the priests and bring an offering. Either a sin offering, a thanksgiving offering, or whatever offering they will bring. The priests will assist that person for the daily ministry. So Jesus, when after the resurrection, on the day of Pentecost, he said to Mary, do not touch me. Remember the story? I will go to my father, your father, to my Lord, your Lord. Do not touch me. So on that day, Jesus doesn't want to be touched yet because he will bring himself first as an offering to the father if his sacrifice is accepted. Because at this stage, Jesus becomes the priests and the offering. On the day of Pentecost, Jesus has become the offering and the priests. In the daily ministry of the sanctuary, it is the person bringing the offering and the priest. So there are two, the offering and the priest. But at resurrection, after the resurrection on that early morning, Jesus becomes the offering and the priests together. An offering and the priests. So, he has to bring himself as an offering acceptable before the Father. I said, don't touch me yet. Because what happened is, if you bring a sin offering, the priest will touch the offering and will investigate every single skin of the sin offering. If there's any blemish to the lamb, that the, the priest will investigate. It's like a checkup. Every the, the gap on the foot, if there's any worm or any, because the offering must be perfect without any blemish. That is the offering. And the priest will investigate it. But before the priest will investigate, the father of the household will also in check up the lamb before becoming an offering. Before the lamb being taken into the sanctuary, the father of the household will also check the offering, no blemish. And then the priest on the second time will check, no blemish. On the day of Pentecost, Jesus becomes the offering, and the priests at the same time. So he has to bring himself to the heaven to present to the Father if he is an accepted offering for all his work from the day he was born until the resurrection. Now, Jesus as a lamb was accepted in the heaven as an offering at exactly 9 o'clock in the morning, Jerusalem time. At exactly 9 o'clock in the morning, Jerusalem time, Jesus as a lamb and as a priest were accepted in heaven by the Father. 
and that acceptance is recorded in the book of Revelations chapter 4 and 5. So Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5, those are the day of Pentecost at 9 o'clock in the morning. Jesus was accepted as a lamp offering and as a minister, as a minister, as a priest. So the two works that Jesus performed in heaven. So when he ascended to heaven and sat on the right side of the Father, he performs the job as a priest on a daily ministry and as a lamb. As a lamb and as a priest on a daily ministry on the day of Pentecost. He begins his earthly daily ministry and as a lamb offering. And that work expire on October 23, 1844, when Jesus moves into the most holy place. Now, when Jesus moved into the most holy place, Jesus performed the second part of the ministry of the priests, which is the high priest ministry, as a high priest ministry. As a high priest. Now, according to the parable of the ten virgins, there was a delay. When the voice is heard, there was a delay. The bridegroom is coming. Remember the, remember the verse? Let's, let's have a look at the, the verse. In verse 6, And at midnight, there was a cry made, and it says, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Let's, let's have a look. Behold, the bridegroom groom cometh ye go ye out to meet him so the bridegroom cometh so when he comes when did the bridegroom comes comes at the midnight where did the bridegroom ca came at midnight where did he came that's a question behold the bridegroom cometh where did the bridegroom come at midnight October 23, 1844. Into the most holy place. But what was the interpretation of the Millerites movement at 1844? He's coming to earth. You see? Can you see now? That instead of going to the most holy place, they think Jesus is coming to planet earth. Now, that's where the delay. That's where the delay. When the delay occurs, it becomes a crisis. A crisis because the foolish virgins, in their understanding, so convinced that Jesus will come October 23, 1844. They were so convinced, they even sell their properties. They even give all their assets to the pastors, so convinced that on that particular day, Jesus will come. That was the crisis. Jesus did not come. The bridegroom delayed. Because the bridegroom has another work to perform. They understand the delay? Because the bridegroom has another work to perform. The problem with the foolish virgin. Let's look at the, uh, the pen of inspiration. Because it might be also our problem. We will be Ellen G. White. The pen of inspiration is having an application to the, to the parable of the foolish virgins. So there was a delay. And the high priestly ministry of Jesus in heaven began on October 23, 1844. Jesus moves into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Now, let's go to uh, the inspiration. Um, maybe if you have the book, let's go to Christ's object lesson. Now, in Christ's object lesson, let's go to the very last chapter. 
maybe I will come I come back I will come back Christ object lessons on the parable on chapter 29 meet the bridegroom so now maybe you have the the the, the, the apps now let's go to the subject of meet the bridegroom so I will be scrolling down because I would like to share with you what is the application of the foolish virgins when they comes back there's more details that we have to understand in the ten, the ten virgins especially the oil and the olive oil the source all right so here <clears throat> the pen of inspiration says that in the parable all ten virgins went out to meet the bridegroom all had lamps and vessels for oil for a time there was seen no difference between them for a time they're all the same Christ's second coming so with the church that live all right so this is the application this is the application of the ten virgins historically we know the history that the ten virgins Jesus gave the parable of the ten virgins after the darkening of the sun the moon and the stars yeah, we know that historically his, history tells us now Ellen G. White is making the application about us before the coming of Jesus okay it says here so with the church that lives just before Christ's second coming when is the church lives before the second coming the 9th of September 2023 just today this is the application so with the church that leaves of September 20, September 9 2023 just before Christ's second coming today the church today all all have a knowledge of the scriptures yeah you name it Jehovah's Witness Mormons Baptists Adventists Catholics everybody even even the Church of Rome is now encouraging people to study the Word of God can you imagine that exactly and by the way Ellen G white did not invent these words it is an inspiration it is through the Holy Spirit he she was inspired to write these words for us all have heard the message of Christ's near approach and confidently expect his appearing but as in the parable so it is now the 9th of September 2023 a time of waiting intervenes faith is tried now question is your faith under trial what faith are we talking here is under trial what faith if you are really following Christ or not this is the faith or are if uh, um, am I really obey God rather than men or am I going to follow the mandates or the liberty of my conscience? This is faith. I tell you, let's keep reading. And when the cry is heard, because the cry will be repeated. The cry, behold, the brethren cometh, go ye out to meet him. We have to get out. Remember the word, get out. When you hear the Roman army surrounded the city, flee, get out, go ye out. To meet him, many are unready. They have no... How did they run out of oil? How do they run out of oil? They have, but they run out. They have, but they doubt. They knew. They knew it. But no decision being made. They knew. 
but unready. They have no oil in their vessels with their lamps. They are destitute of the Holy Spirit. All right. Next paragraph. Without the Spirit of God, a knowledge of His Word is of no avail. That's why when we study the Bible, we, have, we must pray and be humble to be teachable and be willing to change if necessary. The theory of truth, if only a theory but no practical application, the theory of truth and accompanied by the Holy Spirit cannot, 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 if there's only a theory in your mind, yeah, I know about the Sabbath, but do nothing about it. If there's only a theory, the Holy Spirit can't help you. If only a theory, not applied daily. If not applied, if it's only a theory, the Holy Spirit cannot quicken the soul or sanctify the heart. So this is the problem of the foolish virgins. And it may be my problem too. One may be familiar with the commands and promises of the Bible, but unless the Spirit of God sets the truth home, the character will not be transformed. Without the enlightenment of the Spirit, men will not be able to distinguish truth from error, and they will fall under the masterful temptations of Satan, because Satan's deception makes sure that there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. In my early life, uh, becoming to study in the, in, in the uni, my father told me, I'm sorry, I cannot so support you financially to study. But I said, don't worry, I'll work hard, I'll save money so I can go and study. And so even though I make some broom, though it is faulty because there's not enough ingredients i still have to make it like beautifully done to sell to make money even though i know it's faulty so i will just insert under something else just to look good and to sell because i want to make money i want to pay the school fees i want to study this is what satan did satan is making sure his masterful temptation might be accepted even the very elect. Now, let's skip that one. Let's go to the to the next um, verse. Because we are living in the time now. Our trials is on faith. This is the class that in time of peril are found crying. Who has the class? No oil. All right? The class that has no oil in the time of peril are found crying peace and safety. These are the false Adventists. So when an Adventist will join with anybody else in the church and will try to protest about peace and safety, you heard that word? And then sudden destruction. Remember, you heard that word? Yeah, you heard that word. Now, anybody who will join the peace and safety movement, they are fake Adventists. They are not real. They will lull their hearts into security and dream not of danger. Do you understand this statement? They lull their hearts into security and dream not of danger. Now, how many are told that the crisis is coming? Are we? No. Not many. Not many telling that the crisis is coming. What are they trying to preach? Bedtime stories. Peace and safety. Jesus love. Jesus cares. Don't worry. Jesus will look after you. What if you not look after us? Just like the three friends of Daniel. The fire is burning in front of their very eyes. 
I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. I'm, I'm not sure what they're praying, the three friends. So when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask them, what was your prayer? Seeing that the furnace was being heated ten times. What, what was in your heart? What were your prayers? What, what are the words that you prayed to Jesus? You, Jesus, please extinguish the fire. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. That's a good question to be asked. But what if not? What if your head will be in the plate like John the Baptist? What if you are thrown into the dungeon, into the prison, or you're taken away from your family? <clears throat> but let's not let's not deceive ourselves because the foolish virgins they think they have oil. Don't deceive yourself. You think you have an oil. I think I have an oil. I don't want to deceive myself because see, this is the pres- this is the problem here. They, the foolish virgins, they lure their hearts into security. We're going back to normal. And dream not of danger. Don't worry about crisis. Yeah? When startled from their lethargy, you know what's lethargy? <laughs> they discern their destitution and entreat to others supply to supply their lack. This is the problem. They lack something. And be, oh, what happened? It's, it's Sabbath today. I can't answer call. <laughs> it's sad and as in. Okay. Alright, so. One, maybe familiar with the command, unless it's really good, uh, a bit more. Uh, they get the truth, they have. Uh, oh, 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 oh. The Apostle Paul. Okay, here we are. When started from the lethargy. They discern their destitution and entreat others as supply their lack. Now, can we share oil? Just a minute. I think I think this is the problem we are this is the problem we are in. All right. I know you said no, but I, I will explain more further. Where do the oil come from? The olive trees. Yeah? And the olive trees are the two witnesses. According to the Bible. Yeah? Two olive trees? Two witnesses. New? New Testament and? New and Old Testament. So it's the word of God. Now, can we share the oil? Can we share the word of God? Where did the oil come from? From the Word of God. Come on, let's, let's look at this properly. Let's look at this verse properly. Where did the oil coming from? The olive trees. The two olive trees represent? The Old New Testament. Can we share the Old and New Testament? Yes. We're sharing now. Yes. In the time of sharing. We are sharing now. So can we share the oil? Yes, we can share the oil. Ah, look at this, look at this. This is the problem we're facing. Yep, let's scroll down, let's scroll down, let's scroll down. Let's scroll down. Alright, let's scroll down. Okay. What is not transferable? Is the oil transferable? Yes. What is not transferable? Character. Now, it is in a crisis that character is when the Holy Spirit changed me. Now, what happened to the foolish virgins? They have no oil. oil. Why they have no oil? Their character is a problem. Uh, 
uh, the character is the problem. The words they speak, the mind they were thinking, the thought they were thinking, the actions they were doing. Mm, don't drink too much. Don't eat too much. Don't don't sleep too much. Don't don't watch too much. Don't you know? The character is not transferable. When the earnest voice proclaimed at midnight, Behold, the brethren cometh, go ye out to meet him. And the sleeping virgins were roused from the slumbers. It was sin who had made, who had made preparation. That is the character we had to make. Not yet, Dom. I am busy. <laughs> We have to make the preparation because the preparation is character. Preparation is character. Now, no boxer will jump into the ring without preparation. You can't jump in the ring. Yeah? No wonder when the mandate comes, we all become victim of the mandate of 2020 and 2022 until 2023. Why we become a victim? No preparation. We're scared. We're very frightened to lose our job. The problem? Is there a problem with oil? What's the problem? Character. Because the character, it's not practical is the preparation. Preparation is not part of their character. Now, let's think this very seriously. Because the vaccine and the mask and the virus is coming. Joe Biden is already infected now. Just a few days ago. Infected of the virus. Of the virus. Very current. It's coming. Now, don't tell me again, I'm scared to lose my job. This is no longer the issue. When the theory of the truth, when we know by theory, we know by, by mind only that we know that we follow Jesus, we follow God rather than man, but in actuality, we don't practice it. We succumb to the dictates of Rome in case instead of the dictates of the liberty of conscience to worship God. You see the problem of the ten virgins? The five is particularly many of us will be the same if there would be no preparation for the event. What event are we not talking here? Preparation for the event. What event? For sin or had made preparation for the event. What event are, they pre are we preparing now? The coming of Jesus and the coming crisis. You cannot separate the two. You cannot go to heaven in a limousine. It's true, isn't it? Yeah, I know. You can go to heaven in a business class. Not even in a economy class, no. We know that the road we are traveling is we travel the road following the footstep of the master. Yeah? Not your road, not mine. We follow the road that our master has trod 2,000 years ago. We are only following the footstep of the master. Don't make your own steps. You can't even make it. We follow the footstep of the master. Jesus has been telling his disciples for three and a half years, teaching them, training them. You read the whole book of Matthew. We've studied it in Matthew the last time. I think we'll do it again. Uh, we continue the book of Matthew. We studied the book of Matthew the last time. We'll continue the book of Matthew. But when you see the footstep of the master, it wasn't an easy road that he was traveling. 
It's not an easy road that we are traveling. We're following the footsteps of the master. And every step of the way, every step of the way, there are thorns and thistles, and even his very own, even his very own, disowned him. Even Petra said, I don't know him. So we will look at event. Both parties were taken and always. Yeah, because nobody knows. No one knows. None of us knows when would be the no buying and no selling will come. We don't know the date. We don't know when would be the false worship will be introduced by force. We don't know yet. We don't know the date. What's going on? We don't know the date. We don't know the date of his coming. I think I've been touching this all the time. Down a bit. Both parties were taken unawares, but one was prepared for the emergency. Why they were prepared? They made preparation. Those who don't make any preparation, of course, very obvious, will not be prepared. If you don't make any preparations, you're not prepared. So, there is a work of preparation. I invite you, those who are viewing us online, we had a series of Bible study about the work of preparation in our Know Him ministry. Go back and uh, have a look with our presentation about the work of preparation. There is a work of preparation that we must make. We must. Must. It's, it's a must. It's not... Oh, well, whenever I'm ready, I'm going to do it. Mm. Okay. So now, a sudden and unlooked for calamity. It was sudden and unlooked for calamity. What calamity are we talking here? Sudden and unforeseen calamity. What are we looking here? Natural. Tell me one thing. Natural calamity. I know, but what, what is that? Virus, food shortages, let's name them properly. We don't, we don't want to muck around. We, let's name, we, have, we are not get scared. Yeah, we're not frightened. We owe them nothing anyway. The Bible is open for all. Martin Luther, John Huss, John Wycliffe, they died for the Bible. So we, we, have no, we are not indebted to anybody to withhold any information. Let's name it. All this calamity, food shortages, the vaccine, the pandemic, the, the viruses, the malaria, the, the Ebola, the, you name all this kind of calamity. The floods, the, 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 black, the black Saturday in Australia. That was the, the fire that devoured our loved ones. Something that brings the soul face to face with death will show whether there is any real faith in the promises of God. So that means, Pastor, those are not afraid. We are not afraid. I am not afraid to nobody. They can bury this soul six feet down under, and I am sure my soul is secured Amen. in the hands of God. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Because we are facing a crisis and the coming of Jesus. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. It will show whether the soul is sustained by grace. The great final test. Here we are. What do you mean by final? The last, the last one. It's not final, it's another one. Yeah? And it's called great Final test. This is not just a final, but it is great. How did Daniel describe this great final test? Daniel 12 verse 1. A time of trouble that there was not since the foundation of the world. Great final tests. 
How did Paul describe it? In the last days, there would be a perilous time. Peril, peril, destruction. Man will be lovers of money, lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure rather than God, having the form of a religion, but denying the power thereof. It's happening now. This is, the this is the application of the virgins, of the ten virgins. Now, when does the great final test will come? It says, the great final test comes at the close of human probation. Well, do the human probation begins? October 23, 1844. Begins the probationary time. We are living on a probationary time, a time of mercy. We are living in a probationary time. So, there would be a great final test before the coming of Jesus during the time. During. What do you mean during? From 1844 until today. And then Jesus come. Until Jesus come. The human probation. And what did Ellen White? What is the pen of inspiration? It says, When it will be too late for the soul's need to be supplied. Why? Because crisis reveals your character. You cannot build character in crisis. Today is the building of character. If you are jealous, remove that jealousy. If you have that heart that is jealous, please, no time. Re ask the Lord to remove that jealousy. If you have in deep in your heart the, the feeling of animosity, like you, you're angry, your time now, to change it. Let's forgive everything as if nothing has happened and let God do the work. The work of preparation. The attitude of being competitive that has to cease. Envy, sometimes harsh words, sometimes the joke words. This is the thing, uh, boys, let's remember. Don't joke too much. Very. <laughs> don't joke too much. Because sometimes a joking words can be a witness against us. Be very careful with our words. All your vehicles safe? Heavy rain. Very strong. Okay? And it will be too late for the soul's need to be supplied. What supply? Of oil. Because the oil is needed to build character. It's not just the oil sitting there and doing nothing. No. And how the oil function? To bring light. But before it brings light, can you hold the, the light? Or oh, it will burn you. It's burning. It's burning. Meaning that when we change character, it hurts. Not easy. It is a burning experience, but it will show light. It will show light. Look at me before I'm nasty, but now I am a good boy now. Eh? Uh, before I was very um, silly, but now I'm a good boy, I think. <laughs> we need the supply of the oil to change our character a character of the preparation so let's do our preparation please I'm begging you in your prayer include in your prayer Lord help me to prepare for the crisis and for the coming of Jesus 
And a very important character that we must build is to be obedient to the command of Jesus. And one of the commands that Jesus said, country living, I'm very, I'm not, I'm not frightened to tell you. The, the vision, the, the pen of inspiration, if you read country living, Ellen G. White, the Holy Spirit is begging his people to prepare for the crisis because when the crisis come, if you're not prepared, it will either send you to follow the lamb or to follow the beasts. When you're standing at the crossroad, Lord, where am I going to go? Lamb or beasts? And you'll be standing here. You will be standing alone. Nobody will, nobody will help you. Nobody can help you. We must stand alone. And in that standing alone, you have to remember as well that the Holy Spirit will begin to withdraw from this planet and God's people will stand defenseless. Now, it sounds terrible. Yeah? It sounds very scary, but it's not. Because when that time, you are and I am already sealed. Amen. We will not die. Even if they will shoot me with a gun, the bullet will just think that way. Death is not found. Death is not found. At the final day, many will claim admission to Christ's kingdom, saying, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught us, uh, thou hast, and thou hast taught in our streets. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name we have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. What was the answer? I don't know you, depart from me. This is the saddest part of the person's life. This word should not be. So what happened to the foolish virgins? What happened to the foolish virgins? When they realized that they were not invited, what have they done? Let's go to the book of Revelation. Revelation has given us the information. What happened to the foolish virgins when they realized when they realize that they have no oil. Knocking at the door and the voice was heard, I don't know you. What happened to them? Let's go in Revelation. Revelation chapter 17. Let me get back to my Bible. Revelation chapter 17. Oops. Revelation chapter 17, let's see in verse 1. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 1. Because historically, by history, by history, the ten virgins with the parable begins after the darkening of the sun, the darkening of the moon, and the falling of stars. Okay? And at midnight, which is October 23, 1844, the voice was heard. Now, what happened to the first angel's message? Babylon rejected the first angel's message. And that it says, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Now, before Revelation chapter 17, 
this Babylon the Great, before it becomes a Babylon, who is she before she becomes a whore? This Babylon. Yeah, in verse 1, Revelation 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials. Remember the seven plagues? This is... Eh? And talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Let's look at this whore. Who is this Babylon, the great or the prostitute or the whore woman? Yeah? Apostate church. But before they were apostate, who they are? Before they become a prostitute, becomes an apostate, what they are? The ten virgins. The ten virgins. Now, let's go back to Revelation 12. Let's look at the context. It's good to understand the context. Uh, we had a Bible study the, now about uh, Sister Kaika and myself about the, every Friday night at 6.30, yeah, the Daniel and Revelation. But this is just uh, an entree and a bit of advanced studies for, you, for, for us. Revelation chapter 12, all right, 12 in verse 1. Revelation chapter 12 in verse 1. Oh, why did it move? Okay. All right, Revelation chapter 12. In verse 1, let me put the, the chapter. 12 verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a clothed with the sun and the moon and under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Who is this woman? A church. A church. And this church is pure. Yeah? This church is pure. They all have oil. They all have lamps. And they are all marching together, waiting for the bridegroom. This woman. Yeah? This woman. What happened to the woman? <clears throat> she was pregnant. Yeah, she was pregnant. And it says that, and the dragon, in verse 4, stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Right? So this woman is facing the dragon. When do the facing of the dragon and the woman? Let's look at this in the Old Testament. Because the woman is an Old Testament church. This is the Old Testament church. Because Jesus is not yet born. Still in the womb. Still in the Shekinah. The Shekinah glory. The sanctuary where the Levites carrying them, the, in the most holy place, there is a glory that will talk to the high priests once a year about the forgiveness of all the people and then God will give them instructions next. Shekinah glory. Jesus' presence is with them. And then, this woman is pregnant, is about to, to deliver a child, and the dragon is waiting. As soon as the child is born, she will, the, the dragon will devour the child. And she brought forth a man child, it is Jesus, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Remember Jesus was to heaven. Yeah? And what happened to the woman? The woman fled into the... What is wilderness? What is a barren place? United States of America. Yeah? This wilderness here is the United States of America. This woman fled to America. This woman were persecuted because of the liberty of conscience. This is the issue here. They are forced to worship under the dictate of the popery. 
and the, and the Church of England. They fled persecution because of the liberty of conscience, where she hath prepared a place by God. God prepared that place. God prepared the United States of America to be a place for the woman to flee so that the gospel will be preached into all the world. That they should feed her for 1,260 years. And what happened after? The dragon was very angry. He makes war. Because he cannot chase the woman, he chased the, the remnant of her seed. But what did Satan do to the woman? What did Satan do to the woman? To the pure woman? What kind of things, what kind of a persecution that the serpent in? Verse 15. What did Satan do to the woman? Chapter 12 and verse 15. And the serpent cast out, out of his mouth, what is water in the Bible? People. He bring migrants. Migration. That's why every country has office of immigration. So the immigration that Australia had, that America had, that Fiji had, that you can go without visa, that is immigration. Satan, that's from Satan. Satan has cast out water to flood so that the woman will drown. Migration, migration act. That, the, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood of many people. So by sending people into America by immigration, the pure church, the people who keep the gospel, will die out blending with them. So in America, they bring immigration of Catholic background, of Islam background, of a Hindu background, you name it. Satan is bringing an immigration law so that the liberty of conscience of God's people will be under her, his control. Now, can you see Revelation 12? In a different view, in, in, in a view today, based on the ten virgins. Now, what did what did the wilderness do to the woman? And the earth and the wilderness and the earth help the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood. America opened the immigration, and everybody comes in, and the dragon cast out of his mouth. You see the story? You see this one here? Maybe you have not seen before. This is the first time you've seen this verse in this way. Now, in America, in America, we're not talking about Australia, in America, the dragon was wrought with the woman where? In America. Because the woman fled to America. Now the dragon was wrought with the church in America and went to make war with the remnant, the, the leftover, the, the one who the, that remains. Who were the remains of the woman? The Puritans and the Waldensians. Those who stand for the liberty of conscience and keeping the Bible as the word of God. Not the popery. Not the Church of Rome, not the Church of England. Liberty of conscience. And the remnant keeping God's commandments and have the faith of Jesus. Now you can see that this pure woman and her seed, when they went to America in 1844, what happened to the mother? Because we know what happened to the seed. The seed kept the commandment. But what happened to the woman? What happened to her? What happened to her? While in America. While in America, what happened to her? Let's go to Revelation 17. 
This is for the explanation. You see the foolish and the wise virgins? Let's go to chapter 17. Let me skip verse 1. Let me go in verse 3. Let's go. Let's read verses one and one, two, and three, so that we have a good uh, background. Okay, let's let's read verses one, two, and three. Because what happened to the woman who fled into America? What happened to her? And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, "Come up hither. I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters." What happened to the woman sitting on the... many waters? Where did the water coming from? From the mouth of the, of the dragon. Now, where is the woman sitting now? Whore. This whore is now sitting on many waters. All right, verse 2. You get that? Now, with whom the kings of the earth had committed? Where did the kings of the earth commit the fornication? The woman that sits on many waters. Okay, now it says, And the inhabitants of the earth has been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So not only the kings, but the whole world drank. Because this woman is so powerful. And I tell you who is this woman. So, in verse 3, So, he carried me away in the spirit into the... Where's the wilderness again? America. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven hundred and ten horns. Where do the woman sit? On the beast or on many waters? In the first, in, the, in verse number one, seated upon many waters. Now in verse three, sitting upon the, the beast. Where do the woman sit? To the waters or to the beast? To both. To both. This woman, I tell you, this woman is deadly. Mm, it's not my woman. No, it's not my woman. <laughs> not mine. <laughs> you, you, can see, you can see the verse now. I'm only reading the verse. All right, now. And this woman, in verse 4, now sitting on many waters, and also sitting on the beast, what happened to her? And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornications. And upon her forehead was a name written. Now, mother means have children. You can't be a mother without a children, excuse me. Yeah? You can't say to a Mother's Day on a single woman. No. Must be a person, uh, must be a lady with children to be a mother. So this one had children. Now, when John saw this woman, what do you think was John's reaction? Now, let's not guess. Let's read. It's better to read. Let's read. Uh, oh, where is it? Uh, I think in verse 6. Now, it says, And I saw, let's read slowly. And I saw the woman. Who's this woman? The mother of harlots. Drunken with the blood of the saints. What happened to the, to the woman? He was become uh, persecuting, eh? Yeah, too much blood. Of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, you look at the adjectives. I wondered with great admiration. What does it tell you about this adjective? When you wonder with great admiration. So, let me say like this. When I saw the woman, 
Huh? Pretty woman. No, no, not this time. Not it's not pretty this time. Because it's already drunk with the blood of the saints. Huh? John said, I put this in my, in my Filipino accent. It said like this. I can't believe she can do this. Yeah? I wondered with great admiration. When he saw the woman, amazed. Why, why are you so amazed when you see a person? Why you can't believe? Because you see her the first time. Now, I tell an example. I've, I've, I'll give you the example. If this woman here in front sitting is dressed like this today, but when I see her in the night, dressed mini skirt and with the boots like this and, and walking on the street like this, what do you think my reaction? I can't believe this. I wondered with great admiration. Two characters. This woman, this harlot, is the woman in Revelation 12. Woman with white sun, glow with the sun, moon under her feet, and 12 stars upon her crown. And John could not believe that that woman has become. You see the five foolish virgins? And the five wise virgins? John saw the woman. I wondered with great admiration because at the beginning she was pure. Now she's drinking blood of the saints. The church that gave birth to Jesus is the church that persecuted the followers of Jesus. Revelation 17. Now, you got to remember that the foolish virgin went back. When this woman will come back, yeah? When this woman will come back, please do not stand alone. You need the oil. Because when this woman will come back, remember her, her history. Woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Are, are, you, are you with me? Are you, are, are you with me? Are, are, you, are you thinking deep as well in this, in this scenario? That's why I can't let go of this subject. I must tell you. I must share with you. Because we might be sitting here, we're thinking we are safe and secure. Every day is a battlefield. We, will, we are following the footsteps of the Master. This is Revelation 17, Revelation 12, and Matthew 25. The foolish virgins will return. No longer a foolish virgin, but they become a mother of harlots. And they will introduce and they will remove the liberty of your conscience. They will bring back, they will bring back Revelation chapter 13. Let's read Revelation 13. Let's read Revelation 13. The second beasts, the beasts that comes out from the earth. Because this is where the woman fled. Remember? This is where the woman fled. This is the second associate of Satan. Satan's first associate were the papacy. Popery. The church of Rome. Satan's second associate is the beast from the earth, United States of America. 
Look at how America will do when this woman will sit on top of this church. When this church will sit on top of the beasts. Remember that the woman will sit on many waters and also will sit on the, on the beasts. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. Now the woman sitting on the beasts in 17, and that chapter 17 beasts, let's look at, let's look back. Let's, let's, let's look at what kind of a beast this woman sitting. I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having how many, how many heads? Seven heads, how many horns? Ten horns. How many heads does Satan have? Exactly the same. Let's go in Revelation chapter 13. The beasts. And the beasts which I saw was like a leopard, Greek, or Greece, feet like a bear, Middle Persia, and a mouth of a lion, Babylon, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and his great authority. Okay? Uh, in verse 1, I, and I stood upon the son of... And, and he stood. Remember the translation? And he stood upon the son of the sea, and I saw the beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. This is Rome. Right? Now, let's go in on the second beast. So on the second beast... It's America and had two horns and like a lamb of the beast, speak as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. What was the first beast before him? Papacy. Papacy. Church of Rome. Popery. And causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. So America will introduce a, a worship. Not only Sunday worship. Not only Sunday. Many other forms of worship. Virgin Mary, uh, penance, uh, many things. We will discuss later in our study in the book of Daniel and Revelation. And he doeth great wonders, in verse 13, did this land beast, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. This is a false revival. Remember the false revival? Fire come down from heaven is a false revival. They are doing it now. The Baptists are doing it now. The false revival. Yeah, they're doing it now. And there's, no, there's no shortage of it. And deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which they had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image. image. What is the image of the beast? Yeah. It's an object of worship. Yeah? Image is an object of worship. What is the object of worship? Liberty of conscience. Always remember. Always remember. The liberty of conscience. They will remove from you the freedom to worship. It must be their way of worship. That is image. And that image of the beasts is when a church and state unite. That's the only way to remove your liberty of conscience. Which made, which is wounded by the sword and did leave. Oh, sorry. And he should, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So this image of the beast will be back into life. That means the liberty of conscience. You see, the Puritans and all the believers of, the, of the Western Europe, the faithful in part of Europe, fled England and seek refuge to America because of the persecution of the freedom of conscience. And both the image will both Speak and cause as many that would not worship the image of the beast should be, there would be a death penalty. And then those who will not receive the mark, which is Sunday, cannot buy or sell. 
those who will not receive the mark of the beast, which is Sunday, as the mark of their ecclesiastical power, if you will not receive their ecclesiastical power, if you will receive their mandates, because it's coming, you cannot buy and you cannot sell. It will come in many different forms. Sunday law is one of them. Buying and selling is one of them. And many others. Climate change is one of them. Many others that they will bring. Because science is one of their ecclesiastical power. Where do you get your degree in education from? From this. From the Vatican. <laughs> they own the Department of Education. We have none. Who makes the certificate for you to hang on the wall that you finish your master's degree? Who makes that certificate? Vatican. And it's not nothing new. It begins in the church of Ephesus. If you look at the church of Ephesus and Smyrna, those two churches, Vatican is giving people to do business in Roman Empire with a certificate of business and a certificate of trades. There's nothing new today. It's just the same in the old. Who, who made in the Department of Education in a form of compartmentalization? For example, in the, department, in the Department of Education, this is the area of science. This is the area of math. This is the area of physics. This is the area. And then when you go farther, then you have the bachelor's degree in you name it. Bachelor's degree in everything. And when you go into medical fields, again, another compartmentalization. One for the eye, one for the nose, one for the skin, one for the hair, one for the nails, you name it. Every person is compartmentalized. So who is doing the Department of Education the system of compartmentalization, the Vatican. Nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. The Bible say, come out of her, my people. When the foolish virgins will return, my friends, it is our prayer that the holy oil of God will work mightily in changing our character character is not transferable we can share the oil but once we neglect the work of the holy spirit when we know that we are married and we're still playing around with women or playing around with with, with men i tell you you are just making god a mockery you can play around no, no, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, look, as the expression goes, that the, uh, the bad person will go hell. And where do you think the good person goes? Uh, everywhere. So that's no good. Be very careful. Let the Holy Spirit of God work mightily in creating in us a character, a character just like Jesus, that the spirit of Jesus, the, the Christliness and the Christ-likeness will be our character. So when the crisis come, when the voice is heard, when the crisis come, you can stand to meet Jesus. This is the purpose of the ten virgins. And each one of us, each one of us, God has given us abundance of His oil. In fact, He gave some five, some four, some three, some one, but at least there's no one with none. none. Okay? No person with none, at least there's one. 
in the day of judgment, no one can make an excuse. No one can make an excuse. So to all our viewers and to all of us here, it is our prayer. It is our prayer. That let's come to Jesus and ask for the oil. And that oil is not only a theory or a concept, but the oil must be a power, working power, in transforming our character from glory to glory. The character of Jesus will be reflected to us. And when the character of Jesus is reflected to us, doesn't matter if you're from Fiji, you're from Mauritius, from Philippines, from Cambodia, from China, wherever we may be, when this character of Jesus is transforming us and we become like Him, then Jesus will come. Then Jesus will come. Only then Jesus will come. He cannot come when His character is not transforming us. He cannot come. Because when He come and His character is not in us, Jesus knows that we'll be lost. Jesus knows. Jesus is not stupid. He's not like us. He doesn't want to come and you to be lost. Jesus, when He comes, He likes you to be with Him. That's why there was a delay. The delay because the foolish virgins, when they come back, God wants them again for the second time to come out of her, my people. One last chance. One last chance. One last chance. Jesus wants you to be ready when Jesus comes. He's pleading now in the heavenly places for your character to be transformed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the precious gems of truth that we have just heard today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You have given us the wisdom to discern and to understand and to see the future through the eye of the prophecy. Thank you for the eye salves. We bring to you ourselves. We are burdened. We are heavy, heavy laden because of the, of the items that are inside ourselves that it is impossible for us to empty ourselves. But with the help of your spirit, we ask, help us to unload all the rubbish that is inside our hearts so that Jesus can take possession and can possess us and we become like him. And when we become like Jesus, he will come again and we can see him face to face because we look the same. And so, Father, bless us in our study, not only today, but until you come. Please forgive us from all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.